My name is Sheila Vaccaro. I am joined by Lisa Dorsey and Bernie Flynn. First thing I want to do is ask for comments, suggestions, petitions by residents in attendance regarding items not on the agenda. I'm Truman Brooks, 335 Price Street, and the senior pastor of the United Methodist Church of Westchester, 129 South High Street. And I'd like to, to be publicly stated uh, that we have deep gratitude to Sheila Vaccaro, Michael Stefano, Sean Metric, and Ramsey Reiner for coming on site to our church last Wednesday evening, September the 6th. You came to listen, you came to discuss solutions, and while you were with us, we walked around the outside of our building and you observed how well we use our leased parking spaces in the evening throughout most of the year and how impossible it would be for us to set up drop-offs for families for our preschool, one of the largest child care centers in Westchester. Um, we sent you an email proposing what we think an equitable solution would be for those spaces. And I know you have a lot to think about. Uh, you and the whole process is in our prayers. Uh, and before the next work session of the Borough Council, we will continue to work on our end on ways to convince you, number one, that this is an existential issue for Westchester Church, for Albuin Samaritano Church, and for the Children's Center. And we'll talk with neighbors and business folk about their usage of leased spots, especially those that are presently put out for annual lottery. And at the next session, we'll have lots of our folks here, especially advocates for the Memory Cafe and our Children's Center to be part of a lively discussion. Thank you very much. We're going to move on then to the discussion items. A is the bid request for Small Business Weekend, November 24th and 25th. Boom, forget that. <laughs> State your name and address. Uh, hi, my name is Jeff City. I live at 105 South Brandywine. Um, so <clears throat> I know this isn't the typical process, but I'm here to request parking permits for area B. Uh, we live on Brandywine Street and that it's a uh, an unpermitted street. So we've been told over the, we moved here in 19. Uh, we've been told over the past four years that because it's an unpermitted street, we can't get parking perm permits. Um, but over the past few years, it's become very difficult for us to find spots. Um, we're the only house uh, on Everhard Park, literally the only house that has no off street parking. So anytime there's an event, um, construction, anything going on on the weekends, it gets pretty busy. So um, we just wanted to request the ability to get two parking permits uh, because we really don't have any of the parking options that our neighbors have. And that's pretty much it. Okay. This is. Not I actually recommended that he come speak to council since we're updating chapter 77 because he is so close and because we are updating and I know that at some point we'll talk about this later. It does make sense to include them in the area um, in which they are so close to. Um, so I thought it actually did make sense to include this address in this at this point in time since we're probably going to modify everything in the near future. I have no idea when that's actually going to happen, but thank you for bringing this to council. And I'm going to just, we hear you. So this is government. We're going to get to it. Um, but let's, I'm going to move on received. Sure. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know whether this was it's, whatever the, I don't know what the process is, but yeah. A bizarre <laughs> process and, and request, it, it. but your re request is completely legitimate. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Now, you will be, your item is going to be discussed. Ms. Vicara, I believe her item is Woolerton Alley, right? Yeah, that's not, yeah. Yeah. Oh, Wal you're Walton not Alley. traffic. No. You're not, you're not. No. no. So this is. We are going to discuss some traffic, but not that. Um, <laughs> sorry. Okay. And, and it's not. And it's not on the agenda. No, it's not on the agenda. If you, you would like to, to bring yeah. that up now, you are welcome to. This is this is the. Except that I jumped ahead to the bid, but I went back. So I come up and bring your concerns. Before, yeah. So, <laughs> um, I just wanted to be put on the agenda, if we could, about Waller Tonelli. Um, Mr. Flynn had told me to come here. Just to um, because it's such a small lane with lots and lots of traffic 
and it's just going to get worse as Bernie brought up with all the building going on. So it used to have some two stop signs. There's only one now. And I was just wondering if we could look into one way somewhere along the line or four way stop to just slow down the traffic because there's quite a few residents that not quite a few. There's about six, but there's a lot of residents in that area, but some of them are right on the alley. So the traffic goes right by them. So I just would like it on the menu. <laughs> okay. So when, when we're in this portion, you're going to bring items up. We're going to list them. We're not going to say really anything back to you. I'm so I say that. this later on, or I put come so next time. You're, you're, what you just requested is received. We've heard it. Now it's up to us to figure out where that goes and how that gets addressed. Bernie, can you communicate? I shall. He does. He does very well. Yes. I, I annoy him. Good. <laughs> okay. Thank so you. That will, you'll hear more later. Is there any other public comment? Okay, bid, bid items, small business weekend, November 24th and 25th. Good evening, John O'Brien, Executive Director, Westchester Business Improvement District. This is an annual request we come to council with every year. Uh, small business weekend is the weekend directly after Thanksgiving. It started out mainly as small business Saturday and we have really transformed that into the whole weekend. So Friday, Saturday, and Sunday to encourage those who are trying to check things off their holiday list to shop locally here in Westchester. Uh, one of the big draws has always been free metered parking. Uh, so that's not the garages, that's just the street level metered parking on both what would be understood as Black Friday and then um, Small Business Saturday. Uh, since Sunday is already free. So we are able then to market to customers both locally, hyper locally in the Westchester area, but in the greater, you know, Chester County, Northern uh, Wilmington area, Northern Maryland to come to Westchester as a shopping destination that weekend. This is the, one of the biggest ways that Borough Council can support, especially our retail segment. This weekend is vital for them. This is where a lot of them make their money um, and go from being in the red to being in the black that weekend. So we greatly appreciate your consideration. I'm all for it. it. Makes sense to me. Yes. Thank you. All right. Garage monthly meetings. Monthly report. I'm sorry. Hi, how are you? Uh, Joe Mallon, Reef Parking. Um, so I brought a couple things. I, I, last time I was here, you asked for like a breakdown of the weekends. So I, I brought that report to Grover as well. So I uh, had a very favorable month. Uh, tran uh, transient parking was 49479 uh, it was down over budget and down over last year. Uh, year to date, it's 401.653, and it's up over prior year by $28,000, which is a positive. That's Bicentennial Garage. Uh, monthly is 37,360, down 5,000. Variance to prior year 2408, uh, but we did see an increase um, with more people coming back to school and getting passes. So that should that should start to you know creep up into the positive. Year to date 301 274 with a variance of 37197 uh, minus. That's year to date and 12,000 in the in the hole with uh, uh, variance over prior year for um, monthly parking. So there's the opportunity. Um, <clears throat> total is 87,434 and uh, year to date, we're at 16,563 positive over last year. So that's pretty, that's a good number uh, coming out of a pretty slow month in August. Chestnut Hill Garage Transit was 52,433 uh, up over budget by 12,559. Variance over prior year, 12,576. Uh, year-to-date actual is 320408 uh, where the year-to-date variance a budget of 1400 to the good. Uh, and then uh, over prior year, 57000 um, over last year for the month of August. That's so good numbers uh, overall year-to-date and month-to-date for August as far as uh, we just need to get the monthlies. If we could figure that out, that could be a good thing for next year. Um, so combined, uh, 211,183 uh, down to the budget of 2405. Uh, variance over last year up 
5487. Uh, Year-to-date actual um, uh, one million six thousand or one million six hundred fifty thousand four seventy-four. It's down over budget, but we're up forty-nine thousand uh, for both garages year-to-date. Um, so good positive numbers. Um, so when we talked last, we brought up the. Uh, I told you we were adding people on the weekends because the volume is dramatic. So uh, I broke out a couple of things. So if, if you look at the month as a snapshot. Give you an idea, like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, they probably do about $900 uh, per day. Uh, then you jump up to uh, like 8-3, uh, beginning of the month, which was a Friday, we did 2147 dollars so $2,147. So it's a big jump from 900 uh, So normally during the week, what we'll do is we'll schedule late. Uh, weekends, we'll add extra people with, uh, we just added a, an assistant manager and we uh, added a couple supervisors. Um, Saturday up 2420. So what we're seeing is in two days, we're making more than they do in the week, the whole week combined. So, um, go to the next week was a little lighter. Um, uh, we showed increases on, uh, Tuesday and Wednesday of like, uh, like 1300 and 1100. Then it jumped up to 1786 for Friday, 2295 for Saturday. Again, strong. It was strong during the week, but the weekend, I guess people went away on vacation that week. Then you get into uh, 818 later in the month. Um, same thing, 346, 671, 789 during the week. And then it jumps up. It, it, it kind of started ramps up Wednesday, Thursday of about 1100. And then it goes to 2152 and 3141 for Saturday. So again, that's almost. That's that's over 5,000 in two days compared to the whole week. Um, and then as as the month went on, it got even better. So we, uh, 2,113 for Friday, 3,420 for Saturday. Um, and then we're seeing increases now, I guess, with people coming back, you know, Tuesdays and Wednesdays and Thursdays are starting to ramp up. So um, that's a positive trend. People back, kids back to school, obviously, is what it is. People back from vacation. But um, good month for, for a slow month for any company. August is usually a, a tough month, and we showed positive numbers. Uh, we're currently going through um, cleaning the garages. Brought a company, and it's actually scrubbing and spraying instead of just the other guys that sprayed, which didn't do a good job. So you're, you're going to see a huge change um, with that. Um, we have a couple events coming up, which is, I think, the, the restaurant, uh, the Halloween, and the Christmas parade. If I have, a, if there's any ask, the, the problem that we have is at Chestnut Garage. They close Gay Street. That next street down, there's like an alley behind the, um, the bank. Um, if we could put Jersey barriers to keep people from coming down that alley and turning right, and just have them go straight through because what happens is people are coming around and it's called that light unless we put a police officer there it backs up the garage because people can't get out and there's people trying to get in and they're coming all different ways so if we can have traffic just coming straight down and people going down that alley can go straight past chestnut hill to the next street and then out that would be a huge help i must got killed out there <laughs> move cars so do, do you understand that do you, you understand that yeah we, we have already worked on ordering signage and so public works and and we've had a meeting about it and awesome. so we discussed that so i think yeah. we're on the same page and i'll look at a map with you afterwards. cool so where they turn into chestnut and they go up to gay street that's blocked okay. but the, the the alley right be, before that people are coming in and coming down and then going so we're getting everybody bottlenecking at that light. So if they come through the alley, they can go straight past Chestnut, but not come into the garage. Because everyone's trying to get to that light and turn left to leave, and it's causing a major bottleneck. So if we can just have traffic flow, it would be a lot easier. I need to like look at a map. We will, put my I will get you a highlight. <laughs> I believe you. I will walk you. Only yes. because it, it's, a, it's a safety issue for, for me, really, is what it was. It was really a challenge to, to move cars. Through. Appreciate so. you bringing that. Can, awesome. uh, thank you very much for the report. Can you talk about the, the 
full garage signs on High Street this past couple of weeks. So yes, um, the last two weeks they've been doing the power wash and they've been cleaning the garages. So, it's, so that's it's going to change. It's now going to go to uh, Chestnut, but we're waiting until after uh, the restaurant thing. We're not going to do that while that happens. That would be tragic. So It'd be terrible. Yeah. Thank you so yeah. much. <laughs> Anything else? Any other questions? Okay. Awesome. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Okay, we're going to move on to the director's report, the 2024 parking department budget. Sorry. I gave him a map. Okay. Uh, first, the director's report. Um, sorry, it'll be quick. Just want to give a quick permit season update. I know um, it's been a bumpy start, a bumpy season. Um, it was my first, so apologies. You know, I do have Facebook. I read the comments. Um, I'm a human. So, um, you know, I do apologize. I know people are upset, and I understand, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty, and I think, you know, I think Sean and I have met to talk about better ways to communicate to the residents. I'm learning that our software sends out emails that we don't even have access to edit in house. So, um, you know, it's just been kind of a little chaotic, but, um, all in all, you know, I know some people had negative feedback, but a lot of people had really positive feedback away about the way that it went. Um, and the online permitting while not seamless and while students are, ironically, like the worst at it. Um, you know, it did, it, it, we never had to line out the door. Um, we figured out the Calendly situation. Um, I know people are upset that it's taking longer, but you know, rest assured, we're not out there ticketing anyone right now. Permitting, uh, residential permits are lifted at the moment. So, and if you get a ticket, do not pay it. If you If you have a permit that's being, that you're applying for, you can dispute the ticket and we'll dismiss it. We just want to make sure that you're actively trying to get a permit. Um, I know people were upset about having to come pick up guest passes. The reason that we did do that, and that was based on feedback from the clerks in the office, and that was because last year a lot of um, guest passes went missing after they were mailed out, which let me also remind you, we have three clerks in this office, that's it, that we're also responsible for the 4,000 permits approving those, they also had to package and mail out all of the guest passes. A lot went missing and once they go missing, we can't get those back. So if they go missing in certain areas, people come get two more and then that's extra guest passes out on the street that are really hard to find. So the goal here was to make sure that, you know, you were getting your guest passes and they aren't being abused because in certain areas, that's a, a huge issue. Um, Another reason we're doing that is because as we modify our ordinance, we are trying to work on the student rental guest pass issue. So right now we are issuing guest passes for homeowners and longstanding renters, but we are not issuing them for student rental um, areas. So because on Facebook, you can see that a lot, of the, a lot of the students that have out of state tags, they say, oh, just go get your friend's guest pass. And so we're trying to really make sure to focus on getting people that live here and that need a legit parking permit, get those serviced first. So that's what we're focusing on. So I know that there's been some ancillary uses that people are upset about not being able to get service, but our goal right now is to make sure that we get residents serviced and make sure that they can park first. So um, that was the one thing I wanted to say. The other thing that was different this year, um, that hopefully will be successful is that we're changing the expiration date of permits. So there won't be a permit season anymore. When you come in and get a permit, you your permit, if you are a homeowner, it's good for one year from the date of purchase. So if you come in today, your permit is good until September 12th of next year. If you're a renter, a long time renter, your uh, permit is good uh, until your lease expires. So um, if your lease terminates on May 31st of next year, so does your permit. So we're trying to prevent people staying longer in the borough on a parking permit when their lease is expired. So they're gonna to have to renew their parking permit when they renew their lease. Um, if you're a long-term renter and you're on a month-to-month -month lease, all you need is a notarized uh, letter from your landlord.
on a month to month lease. So we're trying to make it work. And for landlords that are trying to get to be able to visit in the meantime, just call us and let us know that you're coming until I have a hang tag or something available. So I, you know, it is a small town enough that I can accommodate any sort of situation. Um, but again, right now we're trying to service the residents. Uh, lot six, I know people were very concerned about doing the lottery for the permit. Uh, it went really well. We did it. No problem. Some people wanted it went to... extremely well. That's a spaz yeah. lot. And the people that live in that neighborhood were spazzing <laughs> because, because they all were worried that they weren't going to get their permits. And uh, I can tell you that they they were very happy because they all text messages from them. You know, it's almost like they got a Christmas present. They were very they were very happy. Yeah, it went well. I found a way to send out people that wanted to come in person were able to do so. I found a way that you can send out a secret online code to send a permit link online. So we did that. I spent my Labor Day weekend approving lot six permits online. So my family loves me. I'm fun to hang out with. Um, so that happened. Um, lot three, we have one space available over there. Um, we don't typically do this, but this gentleman uh, had to leave town. I know he's been reaching out to Bernie. I'm just announcing it here. If anyone is looking for a parking spot in the borough, um, paid the $900. I'm just announcing it here. If anybody's looking for a parking spot in the borough, hit me up. Um, Bicentennial garage, the facade, uh, we're going to have to go out to bid because of our extremely low threshold so maybe raise that to the state purchasing standards at some point but um because of that i just want to give you a heads up that we are also going to need probably an additional fifteen thousand in our and we do have it in the capital budget but i just want to give you a heads up that we're going to go out for that um so don edwards is going to help me with the bid specs we had the meeting with the methodist church as pastor brooks mentioned and that was lovely. Um, we have an issue with, we've changed the posting costs for, um, we post blocks now for construction companies. It's $100 a block and we clear the block. Um, in doing so, I didn't consider funerals. So we're having an issue and I wanted to give a heads up that we're probably, I, funerals, also require enforcement. I don't know the best practice, but um, we've had a couple of people that are concerned about the cost associated with it for funeral homes. Funerals usually pay 50% of what other businesses pay, but the feedback has been that it's a pretty high cost for funeral homes. So I wanted to, to ask parking committee what they thought about the cost. So Right now, we were charging $50 per block to clear the block, but the feedback has been that that's high and that, you know, they're, that we're going to get feedback from funeral homes, but that is too high. So I wanted to hear from parking committee how you feel about it. So we're charging 50 and we would charge funeral homes 25 or we're charging 100 and we're charging funeral right. homes 50. We charge 100, we charge funeral homes 50. Yeah. A funeral home director in the house. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, let me be clear, the mayor was not the one <laughs> complaining. <laughs> no, but I thought maybe she could provide some insight. Yeah. Question, is that 50 for the block or for each side of the block? 50 is for the whole block. Whole block. Mm -hmm. I, I think if it's for the block, that's definitely doable particularly if it's for both sides. Okay. Um, you think that's yeah, fair? Because I, I think at one point it may have jumped from 25 to 100, and that was a concern. Right. So it's 100 for a construction company, and then it would be 50 for, for funeral homes because they, they pay 50% of what um, the, regular, the regular cost is. Um, but the feedback that I got was that that was a concern and that the enforcement wasn't always consistent. So I just, if that's a fair price, you know, we'll make sure that the enforcement is consistent and also coordinate with the police department when we're not on duty. Right. I think it was enforcement. Okay. Was a 
an issue, but fifty dollars if it's for both sides in a block, yeah. I think is fair. Okay. Okay. Cool. All right. Thank you. Ramsey. Yes. Can, can you uh, expand upon what enforcement means? So we post T ticket and tow. It would be ticketing and towing. Yes. Okay. So some the the one issue that we come across is if a car is there when it's posted and then that can't be ticketed and towed because it was there. So you, the assumption is that they might be on vacation and they weren't notified ahead of time. Um, well, the, 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 uh, the, the police, if we give the police the uh, license plate, yep. they can call. I mean, parking can't do it, but right. the police can call and ask them to move their car. Yes. And then if they answer the phone, they'll say either okay or I'm in Jamaica. You yeah. Know, so it, it's, you know, if we're going to enforce it, we should probably, you know, do the, you know, go above what we normally would do to make sure we take care of the funeral directors. Agree. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Um, on the last update, uh, I did speak with the solicitor and we will have a draft of the chapter 77 update for the October meeting. So that will be exciting. Uh, revenue, um, total revenue for the month. I won't go too nitty gritty was 281, 369, Um, ticket revenue was up a little bit. Um. Posting revenue is 3,430. Lease revenue is the same. Meter revenue was 155,411.50. And permit revenue, as you can see, went up a little bit 24,787. And that's because it's permit season. Okay. No. Are we? Doing the budget, or is that? Oh yes, I did. I did do budget. It is not as nice as Bill Mann's. I'm like that. Like that. <laughs> okay, so the notification process for Ordinance 2022-11 Adams Street. I did check in with the parking department. Um, things look the same over there. I did ask them to keep me updated because they did say they noticed a, a couple of construction vehicles. There's a trailer over there that was parked and I said, give me a heads up. I know there's some preliminary site work that's probably gonna start even though land develop development isn't finalized. I know they can do some site work. And I said, if anything changes and you notice that anything changes, please let me know because then we need to know and have a conversation. They said they would let us know, but otherwise, status quo. Okay. And then discuss amending chapter 10420 certain classes of vehicles prohibited on certain highways. And I know that we have some guests here tonight. My name is Paulette Jenkins. I live at 400 West Bernard Street on the corner of Wayne and Barnard. Um, as many of you know, I'm a longtime borough resident and I don't usually come and complain at these meetings, but I have um, a real complaint that the borough is not enforcing the um, no truck, only local deliveries. We have a trucking concern and I don't know if I should mention their name here, but um, they have abused uh, this um, ordinance uh, for a while now, and I'm really fed up with it, and I'm asking you to enforce. Um, I can tell you privately their name. I certainly don't wanna um, mention it in public if you, unless you want me to. But um, every day, uh, there's about nine trucks. They deliver fish and produce outside of the barrel. Uh, the signs clearly are stated on both sides from Minor Street on Wayne, Barnard, Union, and Dean all have clearly marked signs that say no trucks except local deliveries. These trucks start at the beginning of Wayne Street and Hannam Avenue, and they careen through our residential neighborhood, sorry, a residential neighborhood, and use it as a shortcut to get out of town without having to go through Market Street, which has no truck signs there. They could easily turn from Wayne onto Market and get out of town, but there are many lights there, and I feel strongly 
that um, they just want a shortcut. Uh, the type of stuff that they carry in their trucks, they have refrigeration trucks. Most of them are, uh, I, I can't say they're loud, but the stop signs that they have to stop at and start at, and um, just the wear and tear in the residential neighborhood, I mean, really the bottom line is they're violating the ordinance, which is no trucks except for local delivery. I'm not talking about Amazon trucks. I'm not talking about UPS, FedEx. I'm not talking about any local deliveries. Of course, we have to have them, but this is another matter. And all I'm really asking is that somebody in the in the borough uh, goes to the company and says, you have to change your route. Uh, I don't need you to change the truck signs. Uh, you leave them up. It's a residential neighborhood. That was decided a long time ago. The sidewalks are narrow. The buses come through. There's lots of kids getting off and on buses on Union Street, Dean Street, and um, many other um, uh, private school buses come through there too. It just seems so um, wrong that they are disregarding the signs. So that's really all I have to say, and I'm hoping that um, you adhere to those signs and just ask them to stop doing it, okay? I don't know if that means Thank anything. You. Okay, great. Thank Excellent. you very much. Okay. I'm going to tell you some things that maybe I shouldn't be saying out loud, but I'm going to say them anyway. Okay, sure. Um, we looked into this after it, you brought this up, and um, we've been talking about this, or I've, we've been asking about this for a while. Um, not this exact situation, because I didn't know it was happening. So that's... Mostly, I'm thanking you for bringing this up, that it, this is happening. When I looked at this, the fees, the fines for violating this were set in the 80s. Okay. So we need to change some things. Um, and the construction in the borough that is happening means that we need to look at the maps as well. Because, yes, your neighborhood shouldn't have the tracks. Yes. But if we're looking at 80s fines and it's 2023 like the, who cares <laughs> we need to we need to enforce we need to have legitimate fines that mean something and we need to update our map so your complaints are pushing quite a number of okay. things forward and i just want to say thank you so much for oh sure i i do feel though that uh i don't i don't want them to get fined i want them to change their route you know, just somebody call them up and say, change your route. No, we, we, we need to enforce first. That's, okay. that's number one. Okay. So other things are going to deter and then. If you need to know privately the name of the organization, I can give it to you with their address, et cetera. Okay. Sure. Yes. Thanks. Thank you. Bye-bye. Ms. Jenkins. Oh. Hello. Hi. Hello. Mr. Flynn. It's a, it's a shame that those white trucks with the black letters uh, <laughs> say American Beauty on the side of them. Oh, uh, thank you. Not, they're not paying attention to the to the uh, the ordinance. It just so happens they sit in the sweetest ward in the borough, uh, sixth ward. The fact of the matter is the uh, now that you've brought it to us, the borough manager should probably reach out to the police department and bring it to their attention. Have someone go see them because the police are the ones who enforce the uh, the traffic movement. And uh, hopefully we have it resolved by tomorrow. Excuse me. Um, a couple of years ago, I did um, also file this kind of grievance to some, some, I think I called the police or I might have called the parking authority. And they did post a policeman for a while on the street and he did nab a few, uh, not the white trucks, but the uh, a few that were illegal. So um, it's been ongoing with me. And uh, unfortunately, I've lived here a long time. So I, I know the, 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 how should I say, the timeline they just expanded their business, which is what made it more difficult. Uh, they went from like one or two trucks to like nine. So that's what's become the truck route, what I'm calling the truck route through the residential neighborhood. Exactly. And we, should be, we should be enforcing that. <clears throat> the mayor brought up something very similar when Amazon was coming right. to the other side of town. And we, we do have an ordinance. Unfortunately, our police are... are shorthand most of the time and unless we bring it to their intention you know they're, they're not going to pay attention to it but a simple phone call talk to the the owner of that company and and uh a couple of large fines 
what will get his attention. I would really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Thank Mr. you. Friend. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks. May I, may I add something? If if I can get some specific information, I'll mention it to the chief so that we can address it. Okay. We have work to do on that, but thank you. Um, okay. So, Vince, did you want to say anything about trucking in the borough? Mm -hmm. Well, there it is. Do you want to stay? Yeah. Do you want to do that too? It's <laughs> in everything. So thank you. And uh, thanks for your time and giving me the opportunity to speak. And I'll try to keep it brief, okay? Um, I did file, by the way, a, a, um, a right to know request today uh, in reference to the warehouse development that is <clears throat> proposed for construction on Milk Street. Um, it's got a lot of people talking in town. And um, and I'll be I'll briefly read it. Am I allowed to read it? Can I read it? Okay. So I'll briefly read it. <clears throat> so my request was basically this, and it kind of pertains to other things that are going on in the borough as well. But <clears throat> uh, information and or a copy of the traffic study done by the developer of the proposed warehouse site on Neil Street, with specific information pro provided on truck routes that will or may be utilized to facil facilitate ingress and egress movements of trucks at that site. Also indicate whether the borough has engaged with the developer on this matter <clears throat> and what steps may have been discussed to prevent or minimize truck traffic originating from and going to this facility, <clears throat> which might proceed through the borough and especially through residential neighborhoods, for example, High Street, Price Street, Marshall Street, etc. and Rawl State Roads. Um, also, please supply information on the hours of operation of this facility and will be engaged in transportation activities on a 24-hour, seven-day basis, which would be significant. And also, please indicate whether or not this is going to be a farmable warehouse. Um, so um, what I mean by farmable warehouse, basically, is uh, will the people renting that facility be authorized to store farmable and combustible materials? And will they be... <clears throat> Uh, acknowledging that they need to utilize recommended routes for the transportation of those types of materials. Um, on, on the more general question of truck traffic, this is something I've dealt with for years. Uh, I live on a state road. I'll be very honest about that. I live on Price Street. And um, years ago, as you already know, we de-designated Route 100 uh, to a minor, start, minor state arterial route which had a significant impact on reduction of large, uh, through, through, large through, uh, tractor trailers coming through town. Uh, we were having problems with uh, lights being taken out at that point. <clears throat> uh, we were experiencing a lot of curb damage and they were literally shaking our residences in the middle of the night. Well, a lot of those went away, fortunately. A lot, a lot of those vehicles did go away and they would probably prefer not to come through town if they can avoid it. But the, unfortunately, in the days of GPS, they like to follow the most efficient and you know and um, most effective route to get to where they need to go. So I have some business associations on the uh, east side of town, and I've talked with those people, and they've indicated that they can't understand why, for example, tractor trailers will come down Pottstown Pike and down North High Street and make a left on Market Street to go to a facility down on the east side of town. It makes no sense at all when all they have to do is jump on either on the, on the 100 bypass or get on the 322 exit ramp to get on the 202 south and then get, get to um, where they need to be, which is a big consideration, by the way, with this warehouse because the ingress-egress options are very, very limited. And I've already been told that unless the truckers use West Town Road through the auto park to get in and go out, you're going to have a lot of problems, and we will. So that, that matter's got to be taken up with the developer, and it needs to be taken up with PennDOT to see what, what possible solutions they can propose. Um, other things you might want to consider are this. So we have the, we have the Lenape Bridge, okay? And every once in a while, we'll see large tractor trailers coming up Price Street. Not too often anymore, but we do see them. And they're coming over that bridge, we know, and they're probably stopping up traffic, stopping traffic at, at, at that bridge, and creating tremendous inconveniences in addition to the possibility of doing damage to a, a bridge that was reconstructed at great taxpayer expense just a couple years ago. 
So the question becomes, why not contact Hobson and Westtown, who basically have kind of jurisdiction over the bridge, <clears throat> and work with them to maybe see if we can impose um, more stringent uh, restrictions on trucks that are coming across that bridge. What they, they've never changed. After they built that bridge, they didn't change any restrictions at all. The other thing that we might want to consider, I think, is getting Route 52 out of the borough. Route 52 from Route 1 right through High Street is 99% residential, okay? If you were to uh, go to a minor arterial route designation, as we did with Route 100, it could have additional positive impacts on the borough. <clears throat> um, and then the, the, kind of an off-the-wall suggestion that I, that I was thinking about was, you know, the trucks coming down Potsdam Down Pike that don't get onto the 322 ramp, okay, and come through the borough, um, the only way you're really going to stop them, because it, it, it is a state road and these truckers do pay you know, bar, you know, large taxes to the state of Pennsylvania um, to use these roads, is to maybe engage in a turn back program with PennDOT, where it may be feasible and where it might be affordable, okay? They do provide funding for maintenance if you do take the road back, but why not make North High Street a borough road? You've got residences there from you know, up above Virginia Avenue, all the way down to uh, Chestnut Street, and then basically direct that traffic onto the 322 ramp. And if they've got to make a local door ring into the borough, let them take Gay Street, okay? And the last consideration um, is that years ago when I was traffic committee chairman, we talked about setting up truck routes in the borough, with signs, okay, to help these guys. Because like I said, these guys come in here with these big rigs and they don't want to be in here necessarily. Okay, and we've all seen them on New Street. We've seen them on Brandywine Street. We've seen them all over the town. But why cannot the borough sit down with the Pennsylvania Department of Transportation and say, hey, look, we're 1.8 square miles. We got five miles of state roads here. We're densely populated. We need help, all right? So that's generally what I would recommend. I, I think we also have to understand one other thing and I'll just conclude with this, that our bypass system is incomplete and it's never gonna be completed. There's no chance that we'll ever have a Southern bypass. And certainly the 322 bypass interchange, which should have been completed years ago, probably will not be completed because of all the development that's gone on out there. So these are all considerations that we were talking about 25 years ago and nothing has been done. So that's all I wanna say. And I hope that was, was it too much? <laughs> No. Thank you so much, Vince. There you go. All right. I'm going to move on. Approve the 20, 20, August 2023 parking committee meeting minutes. Good. Okay. Budget. Other business? Budget. Stop trying to. I did a whole PowerPoint. Budget. It's really quick. Go you can go. just approve it all, go. and then we don't have to really worry about it. <laughs> okay. I, I really will make this brief. Oh, did you take all my paper by any chance? Okay, okay thank you. <laughs> you can have it when I'm done. Okay, okay. Uh, the parking budget. So right now the current staff is comprised of one director, three clerks and six parking enforcement officers that manage all daily operations of the parking department. Our uh, operations include the daily enforcement of permitting, state and local violations, meters, et cetera. We do all of the meter and kiosk collections, uh, posting for construction and events, customer service for resident issues regarding parking ticket disputes and payment, uh, we're the service liaison to the courts for citations, and uh, we deal with permit questions and service, among many, many other things. It's our little org chart. So right now we have four day shift operators, uh, day shift officers, and two night shift parking officers. So we have one parking, um, one night shift officer from Monday through Friday and another officer that covers from Tuesday through Saturday night. So that means we only have one officer on Saturday nights. Um, so evenings are tight. <laughs> um, 
the goals for 2024. Um, so our goals for 2024 are to focus on wayfinding and enhancements to parking in the downtown business area to increase meter kiosk garage revenue while bringing revenue into local um, coordinate with public works to enhance and replace existing and missing signage to help residents understand how and where to park work with parking committee and residents to overhaul the residential permitting program. Sean is trying to temper my excitement over this. Um, this will be a phased approach, um, but we do we really do need to understand what exists parking wise and then to plan what is coming with future land development. Um, and the two things that I keep reiterating over and over for the parking department, our goals this year are customer service and enforcement. Um, you know, we're working a lot on, on rebranding this department. We really want to bring people into the borough and to make it really understandable how to park. It is so confusing to park downtown. And, and I think I have said it many times. I, once I moved out of the borough, I didn't really come back because I couldn't figure out where to park. And I thought there was nowhere to park. There's actually many places to park. You just can't find them. So if we could just focus on that and then update our meters and I think we could be really solid for that and then focus on the residential permitting for next year. Um, 2024 revenue. We just have a slight projected increase uh, in interest income due to higher interest rates, a slight projected increase in meter revenue and a projected increase in parking permit revenue based on past trends. And this includes a raise uh, in business permit rates. I play it pretty conservatively with revenue estimates. And, you know, this is my first foray into budget season here. But, um, you know, Sean and I have talked, and the goal here is not to focus on, I really don't want this department to focus on punitive revenue. Um, this isn't, you know, I don't like using ticketing as a piggy bank. Um, so we will work on enhancing meter revenue and that's about it. Um, and it, we're not raising our parking rates or anything like that. That's not our goal for this year. Um, expenses, uh, the increase includes the contracted union step raises. But I am asking for consideration to add one part-time night shift employee to see the impact uh, and then see what that would bring for 2025. And the overtime budget is increased this year because we no longer utilize part-time evening employees. So that did have an increase in our overtime budget this year. So this just gives it more, a clearer understanding of that. The operating expenses, uh, we're gonna keep a better accounting of expenses in meter tech and repair line items. I did not do a great job of that this year. Um, a lot of our invoices do look really similar, so I'm working on that. Uh, we did reduce the number of pickups for the armored car service, so that was a reduction of cost. We're gonna keep a better accounting of postage and printing. That line item was reduced and we've gone over of that. And there is an increase of transfer to general fund this year. And then the proposed 2024 capital budget uh, projects that I have, um, I have a proposition of two license plate recognition cameras for cars that I have a general um, estimate. They were priced at 45,000 each. This would enhance enforcement without the increase in um, additional staff. So uh, I don't, like I said, I did get a, a quote from a company and, and that was the cost. Um, Kiosks in town center, each one is 8,795 per unit. So the goal would be to phase this in over time to remove the meters and to update downtown with the Flowbird kiosks. So we're looking at 14 total to start with the town center area of Gay and Market. So the total cost would be 130,000. The garage camera replacement, this is $25,954. This is in partnership with IT. Um, Bill can speak more on this. This would be a four-year capital investment. Um, it would be a four-year lease, right? With a dollar buyout at the end, his favorite. Okay. These cameras are 10 plus years old. We can't buy new cameras. They use old coaxial cable. 
the ability to uh, project them to like police dispatch or to parking or to anyone is very reduced. They really need to be replaced. And there are a lot of cameras and a lot of technology there. This would be a, a cloud based system where they, the cameras are recorded in the cloud, accessible live to the police department, to a parking service, whoever else needs to see them. Um, this also would be basically installed by IT, IT and public works probably. Uh, that's how we're reducing cost. And I can see Bernie looking at me funny. <laughs> and this is a four year lease with a dollar buyout. Otherwise, it would be probably too expensive in one year to invest all that cost. And it's co stars. But we're not even sure which solution they get yet, but we have a cost expectation. That is one, that's both garages, which are both in dire need of security cameras. Uh, and also wayfinding signage, which is we're we have not gone out to bid, but the placeholder number we're using is 180,000 for that. Uh, the roof coating, this is a carryover from the previous year, this year, which is 150,000. Uh, we did not get out to bid on that. So that would be a carryover. I should mention kiosks. I didn't, I really kind of undersold that, but those also have a, a cost savings to them because the amount of time and money with the collections for these meters, we have to collect meters twice a week, otherwise they jam and then we lose money on the revenue for the coins. So I'm really underselling it, but meters really are just the bane of my existence at this point. So um, it would be a win. And also with the gay street closures, it would be nice to have kiosks in that area at some point because it would just, um, you know, aesthetically be nicer to not have a meter pole in your back when you're dining out under the stars. So, uh, and that, that is my quick budget. Do you guys have questions? Let's have one quick question. Sure. From the revenue, you mentioned the interest, 1200, you expect it to go up 1200%? That is a Sean question. <laughs> yes. You can do it. Uh, we're managing the uh, cash flow with, uh, our Pligit accounts, and we and right now I think the current APY on that account is 5.4%. So as long as we manage our cash appropriately, and we've looked at average daily balances for the year, we think we actually think that's an underestimate. We're actually being conservative because we think interest rates might move in the other direction next year. We'll all be happy if that happens. So. <laughs> Process. Okay. <laughs> uh, it's early in the process, just so you know, Ramsey didn't mention, but the bottom line in parking is that we're positive $45,000 on revenue and expense expenses. So this is one fund I'm not worried about going into next year. We'll have more to talk about at the general fund. The, the things that you've said you need all matter a lot to me. So uh, I think that this looks really good. Thanks. I will say I am a very frugal person, so I don't, I, I won't ask for it if I don't think it matters. But. Thank you. Any other business? Seeing none, we will adjourn at 7.05. You approve the minutes, right? Did you approve the minutes? I have nodded and then just <laughs> went to the budget. Okay. You all heard that.